family. Um, we are the UT students who will be actually presenting um, the transformation in higher, higher education in South Africa, of which we have the first concept that we will be actually discussing, of which is uh, decolonization of curriculum in higher education. So the leading question for this uh, particular concept uh, is, is it possible and worth it to decolonize uh, curriculum in higher education? Therefore, we, I will actually uh, appreciate if everybody engage on this topic so that uh, we can find out if um, it will be worth it to actually decolonize the curriculum. Thank you very much. Uh, so if we may start, with the first uh, speaker who would like to actually contribute towards this uh, topic, then the platform is yours. <clears throat> okay, I think uh, based on the topic, uh, for everyone to understand, we would first have to understand what is decolonization. Mm. Okay. So is there anybody who would want to uh, clarify the concept for us? Um, I think it would be best to define decolonization to also favor the topic. So we define it as the gain of independence, educational independence for South Africa as a country without having any hand from any other country. Yes, yes. Okay, I would also say it is all about Africanization. We are taking our education system from the Western. Because if you can look at the current problems that we are having right now, the current education system or the curriculum that we are having is not really addressing those challenges. So that is what I think about decolonization of the curriculum. Okay. Since we understand the, the concept of decolonization, meaning we are moving from the colonial um, part of it into what Africanism is. So it means specifically in South Africa, we would have to stick with what is South African. Right. Uh, with that, then we would have to discuss what would be the challenges and what would be the benefits of actually us moving into decolonization of the curriculum in higher education. So, um, my view would be: I think decolonization would be okay if we Africanize it, but it won't work for all faculties uh, of higher education. Take for instance, I know uh, I'm a hospitality professional. Uh, I think it would not uh, actually work in our favor if we were only to concentrate on the Africanness or South African concepts of the curriculum of the hospitality one. Uh, take, for instance, in hospitality, uh, we have our French, um, culinary French uh, cuisine, we have our Moroccan, we have our Chinese, uh, Italian, so then we have to also know those. Right, it won't only be Western based, but for other countries as well, we would have to include in our curriculum. Also, because we are in an industry that is working uh, on an international level, so we have to interact with other countries, know what their concepts are, but also we need to include ours as well in other countries, not only for our country, but include them in other countries. Uh, if I may add, I would say actually the intention behind decolonizing education is not uh, uh, literally to say we we'll remove Europe or maybe uh, the United States from everything, whatever they did. But the intention is here to say uh, the demand for decolonization, uh, decolonizing education is an essential demand for critical literacy, where knowledge is presented as a social con uh, contrast that is intimately linked to the norms and views of us. So that's why we say maybe it can still work for us, even though uh, it will come with challenges there and there. OK, the other challenge is the challenge of the resources. Do we have enough resources to be able to decolonize our curriculum? We must start there first. And then the other issue will be the issue of the language that we are currently using in our educational system. We are still using the, colon the colonialist language at first, right? So I think we must also start there. Then this shows that it is going to take us a long time to achieve the decolonization of the, the curriculum. And then the other problem I'm going to talk about 
the current problems that we are, we are experiencing in South Africa. We have problems of electricity, power shortage, we have problems of water, right? Mm -hmm. So the thing that we have to mostly focus on is what kind of challenges we are having at the moment and the resources that we are having in South Africa. And then we take those challenges, I mean the resources, and then we channel them to address the challenges that we are having in South Africa at the moment. If I may uh, come in on the issue of uh, decolonizing using African uh, Africanism, I think we're going to have a challenge in terms of technology, whereby terminology and other things that are global, you are going to experience issues in terms of changing them. So we feel decolonization has got areas where it will be challenged and it will take time for us to be able to adjust into the level whereby we will fully apply this uh, decolonization. And I was to say, <clears throat> to, to, to get in this, I want to say, I'm in line with the topic and I understand it, the sense of taking whatever that's ours that it belongs in from us to us. Yes. But now the question is, is our country ready now? Because mm -hmm. if we, we may look and overall the education system from where it is currently, there are quite a number of things that needs to be fixed. And we are currently speaking on a higher education. If we say decolonization, it has to start from the foundation phase. That's where we're taking ours to Africanism. So it's a, it's a two-way traffic where it should take us time, but if we really want it, it's possible. We need to start somewhere. So it is imperative that we put our heads together and see how best can we take what is and we have our ownership in terms of our curriculum so that we are able, that is the new generation can be able to adjust and be able to master and be able to be the uh, conquerors of the Africanism. So the, the question of possibility is also important because the implementation plan it will take a lot of time to develop the implementation plan to Africanize the, the, the curriculum really right. The varsities in South Africa that are really rooted into the system because it helps them get qualified. What about the people who have already qualified through the system? Because they also have a great sphere of influence. Doctors who qualified through the system, lawyers who qualified through the curriculum. We have to also consider those factors because it's gonna be like we are alienating them, we're leaving them out, and then we're focusing on the people that have not yet benefited from the system. So the change will be drastic, the change will be beneficial to Africa, that's a good thing. But the implementation of the, of the plan, or rather decolonization whatsoever, will have a lot of setbacks than us actually going forward. So that's going to be the problem that we're going to encounter as well. Okay. I think also to add to that, uh, yes, it's going to take a lot of time. If we have to say uh, it should start some way, where exactly should it start? True. Because if it has to start somewhere, then we should be able to pinpoint where. Mm -hmm. So it, it, will boil, it, it will take us back to where I'm saying. Before we even come to the higher education and, and training, we have to start on the foundation phase. That is the basic education. That's the basic education. Oh. That will also cover whatever that which is saying. What about those who have passed on the system? So it. If we start with the foundation phase, we know it, it's coming yeah. yes. on the education system until the civil sector. I think yes, it's, it, it's a good thing if we say it has to start at the foundation phase because then we can start uh, with the policies, if the policies uh, starting from foundation phase, working all the way into higher education. True. I think in this case, all the departments, especially the policy makers, it is very much important that when they structure these policies, they need to favor the Africanism instead of uh, adopting other uh, uh, cultures in terms of the, 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 the curriculum that they are designing for education system. Mm -hmm. Like, um, it, it's, it's the certainly part of the fact that apart from education itself, an educational system has a backbone which is a political system. 
So with a westernized political system, trying to change a westernized educational system will work. So basically the other unintended consequence would be that we have, we'll also have to change the political system before we can actually change the educational system. So another setback again. But in conclusion, we are saying it's possible. It is possible. Although it is going to have the uh, setbacks whereby uh, we will uh, we'll need to be considered, especially things like uh, we said the political system. Uh, that's where we will have to start from, and then maybe move on to the um, phase two. That we will say for now, for from us, we are saying is at the basic uh, or foundation phase of our education system. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, having different views about this, uh, it means that it is possible, although it might take time, and it will come with maybe lots of challenges, unexpected things. Uh, because uh, when we talk or discuss issues like this one, sometimes it looks as if it will be something that can be done within a short period of time. But there are too many factors that have to be uh, taken into consideration. consideration. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.